Standing for principles of honesty, integrity, personal freedom, and the role of the U.S. Constitution as the supreme law, a certain country lawyer uncovered corruption, greed, wrongdoing, and a cover-up by the President of the United States as he led the Special Senate Committee investigating the Watergate scandal. Senator Samuel James Irvin will be forever remembered as that country lawyer. He was someone who believed in the rights of the people under the Constitution, to have an honest government and free elections that are not illegally influenced, and the responsibility of their elected officials to have integrity, to work to improve society, and to uphold the law. Sam Irvin was born in Morganton, North Carolina on September 27, 1896. He attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, graduating in 1917. Following his service in World War I, he studied law at Harvard University, earning a degree in 1922. He immediately began a long public service career, serving in the North Carolina General Assembly as a judge, associate justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court, and in the U.S. Congress. From early in his career, Irvin was known as an expert on constitutional law and a defender of the document. He was involved in religious freedom disputes, opposing a bill prohibiting the teaching of evolution in the 1920s in North Carolina, and standing against a constitutional amendment concerning prayer in the public schools as a U.S. Senator in the 1960s. Irvin believed that the U.S. Constitution guaranteed civil liberties through the Bill of Rights, which prevented actions like illegal searches or invasions of privacy. For maybe 10 years before Watergate, Sam Irvin was investigating abuses of government power. He was trying to protect the civil liberties of a lot of different people. Irvin had been investigating time and time again where the government had gone too far and threatened other people's rights. However, he opposed the government's direct involvement in providing civil rights such as affirmative action, desegregation, and the Equal Rights Amendment. He felt that the Constitution had already guaranteed these rights for all and that laws and enforcement by the federal government weren't needed. He was concerned with the rise of federal power and influence through these issues. His stance in guaranteeing civil liberties for individuals under the Constitution while opposing government involvement in civil rights for minorities and women have led some to question the purity of his commitment to the document as these topics frequently overlap. Irvin's reputation for his scholarship concerning the Constitution combined with his popularity with fellow senators led to two major appointments during his career. In the 1950s, he served on the Senate committee that censured Senator Joseph McCarthy for his anti-communist crusades. In 1973, he was chosen to chair the Senate Select Committee on Presidential Campaign Activities, which was to investigate the June 17, 1972 break-in by five men at the Democratic National Headquarters in the Watergate Complex. Evidence indicated they were hired by Nixon's campaign to plant listening devices and to steal documents. The questions that have been raised in the wake of the June 17 break-in strike at the very undergirding of our democracy. If the many allegations made to this day are true, then the burglars who broke into the headquarters of the Democratic National Committee at the Watergate were in effect breaking into the home of every citizen of the United States. And if these allegations proved to be true, what they were seeking to steal was not the jewels, money, or other property of American citizens, but something much more valuable, their most precious heritage, the right to vote in a free election. Mike Mansfield, then the Senate Majority Leader, said of Irvin, quote, Sam is the only man we could have selected on either side who would have the respect of the Senate as a whole, unquote. The Judiciary Committee was formed with Senator Irvin as the chairman because Senator Mike Mansfield wanted somebody who was well respected. Its duty was to find about, out about all the things that were related to this break-in. Irvin set out to put together a bipartisan committee to conduct the investigation. Using his knowledge and interpretation of constitutional law, he disputed President Nixon's assertion of executive privilege when Nixon refused to release information for the investigation. Irvin argued that executive privilege did not give the president the right to withhold evidence or protect those working closest to him. He thought that he could do anything he wanted to do because of, quote, executive privilege. And these things have been boiling for a long time. Uh, when you have a crisis in America, you test the separation of powers doctrine. You have each of those branches of the government that are supposed to be a, a check and a balance on the other one. 
and the executive branch had just gotten out of hand, and there were other presidents that, that violated those principles to the separation of powers. During wartime, economic crises, uh, all kinds of things happened. Nixon versus United States was a very significant decision because the court unanimously said that a president is not above the law and that there are no special privileges for a president unless you can show that it is some way connected with the national security of the country. Irvin felt the American public had the right to vote in free, unbiased elections. He saw it as his responsibility to ensure the Constitution and the rights of the people to fair representation were not trampled by Nixon and his aides. Critics felt Irvin's committee wasn't about uncovering wrongdoing by the president. They believed that the hearings were about politics and that Irvin had a personal vendetta against President Nixon, or that the Democratic Party was seeking revenge against the Republicans after Nixon's second term victory in 1972. Ultimately, the perseverance of investigators in Irvin's committee uncovered evidence that directly tied Nixon to the cover-up after the burglary. The Watergate tapes, recordings of meetings Nixon had with his aides, provided overwhelming evidence that Nixon was involved in obstructing justice. When the tapes were discovered, uh, and part of that was because of the work of our committee, and then I took the subpoena down there 40 years ago last July, and then the, the Supreme Court finally ruled that there's no immunity for the president. And, and they found that you had a president sitting there in the office saying things like, well, how much money would it take to pay them off? Uh, things like that. But those are violations of law. They're, they're terrible things. This led to articles of impeachment being drawn against him in the U.S. House of Representatives. Nixon avoided the embarrassment of a vote on these articles by resigning on August 9, 1974. Irvin left public life in December of that year, resigning his Senate seat and returning home to Morganton, where he resumed his country lawyer life until his death in 1985. Irvin's commitment to his principles gave him a folk hero status among Americans, but his committee failed to constrain the practice of executive privilege, even though he believed it to be abused. U.S. presidents have continued to use the practice with a variety of issues when dealing with Congress or the judicial branch of the government. Almost everyone who writes or talks about Watergate says this is a lesson of how the American system works. As a historian, I disagree. I think we should say this is an example of how close the system came to not working. The President of the United States lied, broke the Constitution in multiple ways and yet the Congress was barely able to remove him, as extreme as his executive power had become. If it wasn't for Sam Irvin and a few others that helped him, we may never have stopped this. And indeed, today, we live in a time where, once again, our liberties are under challenge. Sam Irvin feared that our generation might slack off, might not stand up and fight for our rights. And so, Watergate barely worked, and I'm afraid that in the future we could be in danger of an upward. There was one result of Watergate that Senator Irvin and his committee could not fix, the trust of Americans in their government. Their faith in the principle of an open, trustworthy government has steadily declined. This slide accelerated during Watergate, even with Irvin's promises that his committee would get to the bottom of the break-ins and cover-up and punish those who were involved. This distrust by Americans in their government continues to this day. While Sam Irvin was ultimately successful in protecting the rights of Americans while upholding the responsibilities of an elected official with his service during the Watergate hearings, his positions on civil liberties and civil rights have clouded his legacy some 40 years later. In Watergate, however, his commitment to pursue the truth and protect the Constitution and its role in our democracy upheld his principles. Sam Irvin's actions also helped demonstrate that our form of government does work and that no one, not even the president, is above the law.